Namaste. This is David Hawthorne at astroview.com. Today is the 27th of May, 2015. The following is the Vedic Astrology reading for John Forbes Nash, based on the 13th of June, 1928, at 7 a.m. in Bluefield, West Virginia, USA. Now, John Nash was an American mathematician. His theories are used in economics, computing, evolutionary biology, artificial intelligence, accounting, computer science, politics, and military theory. He was a senior research mathematician at Princeton University during the latter part of his life. He also shared the 1994 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics in Economic Sciences with uh, two other professors and he was awarded the 2015 Abel Prize. He graduated from Carnegie Institute of Technology in 1948 which is the age of 20 with both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in mathematics. So he earned a scholarship, a full scholarship to Princeton University where he went on to earn a PhD in mathematics in 1950. Between 1945 and 1996, he published 23 scientific studies. In 1978, he was awarded the John uh, von Neumann Theory Prize for his discovery of non-cooperative equilibria, now called the Nash Equilibria. And he also won the Leroy P. Steele Prize in 1999. Now, he was also the subject of a movie called A Beautiful Mind. He was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia around April, May 1959, later was admitted to the New Jersey State Hospital in 1961, where he spent about nine years in psychiatric hospitals and he received the typical antipsychotic medications and even insulin shock therapy. But after 1970, his condition slowly improved, and that allowed him to return to academic word, uh, work by the mid-1980s. He did have one son with a woman that he actually left during her pregnancy, and then later he had a son with his wife, Alicia. His wife graduated from MIT with a degree in physics, and he married her in February 1957. They got divorced in 1963 during his problems with his mental illness. But they eventually returned and remarried, actually, in 2001. And then on May 23, 2015, so about four days ago, he and his wife were killed in a motor vehicle accident in New Jersey. So let's now take a look at this chart. Now one of the things I recommend to my students is that we can read the position or placement of all the planets just based on their position. Then we can get into more detail, yes, in terms of signs and functional nature, that type of thing. Now we see in the first house, at the time of birth, John Nash had the third sign of the zodiac ascending at 24 degrees, 16 minutes, of Gemini. And he has Mercury in Gemini at 19 degrees, 15 minutes. So we would simply say that Mercury in the first house makes the person an intellectual. This person is well suited to writing and to intellectual pursuits, and basically being a messenger. Now we do know that Gemini is symbolized as the twins, male, female, two and one wholeness. But it is the twins, it is duality. So these that stands that this person can have that dual personality, that dual situation that took place. In the second house, he had the fourth sign, Cancer. So Moon rules his wealth status and continuation of family life. In the third house, he had the fifth sign, Leo. So Sun rules his mind, 
his mental development, self-expression, self-initiatives, and most importantly, his health. This is true for all Geminis. The fourth house had the sixth sign Virgo, so Mercury ruled childhood, parents, property, and Mercury's well placed in the first house. In the fifth house, he had the seventh sign Libra, so Venus rules his fifth house of mind and higher education. And in the sixth house, he had the eighth sign Scorpio. And this is Saturn retrograde at 22 degrees in Scorpio. And this is K2, the southern node of the moon, at 16 degrees in Scorpio. In the seventh house, we have the ninth sign Sagittarius, eighth house, tenth sign Capricorn, ninth house, eleventh sign Aquarius. Tenth house, we have the twelfth sign Pisces with moon and Mars in Pisces. Moon at 28 degrees, 50 minutes. Mars at 27 degrees, 46 minutes. In the 11th house, we have the first sign, Aries. And this is Jupiter sitting in Aries. And in the 12th house, we have the second sign, Taurus, with Sun at 29 degrees, Venus at 24 degrees, and Rahu, R-A-H-U, the northern node of the moon, at 16 degrees. Rahu and K2 in this chart are in their exaltation signs. Now, in terms of just the placements, we say that Mercury in the first house gives the intellect the ability for writing and communications. He becomes a messenger of sorts. And this is an air sign. Air sign persons can be quite brilliant. And Mercury in its own sign of Gemini in a kendra, first house is a kendra, is considered a Panch Mahapurush Yoga. So Panch means five, Maha means great, one of the five great yogas of life. This one's called Badra Yoga in the first house. Now we see that Saturn is sitting down in the sixth house of conflict and it rules this ninth house of organized religion. And it's a known fact that he was an atheist. So this contributed to being an atheist. There's some conflict relative to religious views. When Moon is in Pisces, the ver person is very tender-hearted, very sensitive, very intuitive, very compassionate. They feel very deeply. Mars in the 10th house connects his career with mathematics, logic, engineering. At one point he was studying chemical engineering, mathematics. You notice that Moon and Mars are very close to each other. So Moon is the mind and Mars is logic, and a very logical mind. Moon rules the second house of wealth and status, and it's in the 10th house of career. Mars rules the house of gains and income, and it's in the 10th house of career. So this connects his career with mathematics, science, logic, the mind, and the public. Jupiter, in the 11th house of Aries, this is the house of income, and Jupiter is professor, teacher, educator, publisher. So he gained his income through education. And in the 12th house, we have Sun, Venus, and Rahu. Now this is a little bit of a tricky situation because this is not an ideal house. In fact, for every rising sign, we would say 12 houses are favorable. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, ninth, tenth, and eleventh Planets in those houses are considered well-placed. So Jupiter, Moon, Mars, and Mercury, very well-placed in this chart. And these are all the planets connected with intelligence. But three houses are not favorable. These are the 6th house, the 8th house, and the 12th house in any chart. Planets going into those houses become weak. So Saturn here is weak. That can cause trouble with the teeth, neck, back, spine, knees, joints, and ankles. And it caused some conflict with organized religion and maybe even with his own father. He gave his father some health issues. Now Sun for Gemini is a very important planet. It rules this third house and it absolutely rules the health. And Sun is intelligence, innate intelligence. Now the twelfth house is the house, it's actually called Mokshastan, the house of spirituality and enlightenment.
but it's also connected with ashrams, being reclusive, monasteries, convents, foreign lands, and institutional life, including hospitals, prisons, and institutions. The sun at 29 degrees is considered old age and weak. So it would have been good for John Nash to be wearing a ruby gemstone. Now because Sun rules his third house of self-initiatives and it's in the twelfth house of foreign lands, he can have some successful worldwide ventures. So he does have international recognition. And Venus rules his fifth house of higher education and it's in the twelfth house of foreign lands or at least education away from his birthplace. And the education can be connected with institutional life. And we have an exalted Rahu here. Now, if Rahu was at 24 degrees, it would be causing trouble, but it's not. It's at 16 degrees. So this is just an exalted Rahu, which can cause an increase. So maybe that contributed to some increase of education. Sun is royalty, and Venus rules the fifth house of education. So it gives royal education. Sun is PhD. He has a PhD. So in some regards this is fine, this is good, but it did cause some other trouble. See, Venus rules the fifth house of children. His, he abandoned his first child when he abandoned his first friend, his woman friend had was pregnant by him. And he did not marry her, he abandoned her and the child. Venus is also wife and he did separate from his first woman friend and he also divorced his wife or they got divorced probably due to the mental problems. And that's the other point, is that the Venus rules his fifth house of mind, and it's in the twelfth house of loss, loss of mind and institutional life. So he was institutionalized by the government of the state of New Jersey. So nobody told him early to wear a ruby for the sun and wear a diamond for the Venus. He needed to strengthen those two planets. Now, Moon is slightly weak, about 29 degrees, that's old age. So he can wear white clothing and a single pearl to strengthen the Moon for wealth and status. And Mars is a little bit weak, about 28 degrees, that's old age as well. So that causes some weakness relative to friendships and income and older siblings. Let's turn now to the timing of events. By the way, we do look at the Navamsh chart. This is a one ninth divisional chart. Primarily, we look to see if planets have gone into debilitation signs. See, this Mercury is in Pisces. That's a debilitated sign for Mercury. And it rules the fourth house of happiness at home. So some lack of happiness at home. So it would have been good to wear the emerald gemstone to strengthen the Mercury. Moon is Vargotama. It's in Pisces here and Pisces here. That's that's considered favorable. So let's look at the timing of, of events here. So he's born in a Mercury main period. It's in the first house. He rules the intellect. Seven years of K2. So maybe very spiritual, private stuff during that seven years of K2. And then 20 years of Venus ruling higher education and the mind with the royal sun ruling mental development and self-expression but reclusive probably didn't have much of a social life so this is always education during Venus then his six years of sun started in 1956 actually you call it 1957 and it was 1959 that he began to be diagnosed with mental illness. But I think it's caused because he went into the sun period. Six years of sun, not favorable, because sun is weak in old age and in the 12th house of institutional life, hospitalization, with Venus ruling the mind. So this is not ideal time. It would have been good to wear the red ruby gemstone. 
Then 10 years of moon, he started to recover during the moon period. Around 1970, in 70, 71, 72, he started to recover. Then he went to Mars, much more recovery here. And seven years of Mars was quite favorable. By 1980, he was back in society, back in academia. And there he went into this 18 years of Rahu. Now Rahu for him is exalted and it aspects five, seven, and nine houses away, but there's nothing at 16 degrees. If planets are not within uh, within five degrees of each other, there's no impact. So Rahu is eight degrees from Venus and 13 degrees from Sun. So Rahu is causing no trouble either to the house it occupies or the planet it is sitting with or to the houses it aspects. See, it's also about... Uh, six degrees from Saturn. So Sun is, Rahu is causing no trouble. Rahu can give an increase. It's in the 12th house of institutional life. So we return to institutional life for those 18 years. Then he even did better. This 16 years of Jupiter is good for him. Jupiter is extremely well placed in the house of gains, income, publishing. He won awards. And then most recently he went into the Saturn main period and Saturn subperiod. He was in double Saturn at the time of his death in May 2015. Let's look at that a little more closely here. So this is the birth chart on the left side of the computer and where the planets were at the time of birth and this is the birth chart and where the planets are currently. So This is a major clue over here. He was in Saturn main period, Saturn sub period. Look where Saturn is in the sixth house. It's in the house of accidents and injuries. And it has an influence on Venus, and Venus has an influence on Saturn, and Venus's wife. His wife was killed in the same car accident. And look at the transit chart. Where is Saturn? It's returned to its natal position. But it's in the sixth house, Scorpio. Scorpio is the eighth sign relates to the eighth house. Eighth house is accidents and death like experiences. It's called Rondra, it means transformations, vulnerability. So, natal transit and tra uh, uh, natal Saturn, excuse me, natal Saturn and transit Saturn, which are the main and sub period rulers, both connected with the sixth house both in the eighth sign relating to the eighth Baba, the eighth house of accidents and death-like experiences in the sixth house's injuries. Let's look at some other transits here. This is an important one right here. See this Rahu at 14 degrees? So slide him over here. Rahu sitting here at 14 degrees recently. It aspects five houses away, seven houses away, and nine houses away. It's not bothering Mars or Moon. It's outside the five degree orb. It's not bothering Sun or Venus, but it is bothering its natal position. So this transit Rahu sitting here is afflicting this natal K2 sitting here. I have this natal Rahu sitting here. And the same thing with K2. Take this K2 at 14 degrees, put him over here. No bother here. No bother here or here, but right here. So this transit K2 at 14 degrees afflicting K2 at 16 degrees. Now this actually began back at the beginning of May. So this transit affliction is for all of May, all of June, all of July. No, it, this trans, I'm sorry, I misspoke again. This transit began at the beginning of March 2015. All of March, all of April, all of May. So he doesn't get out of May without this transit taking effect. They're starting to move now. Around June 2nd, they'll get to like 13 and then go 12, 11. The important point about Rahu and K2, they, they always travel retrograde. They go 9 degrees and stop. And they'll stop for up to 3 months. Then they move 9 degrees and stop for 3 months. So, so around March 5th, the beginning of March, they hit 15 degrees and went stationary. They're just now moving at 14. And then they go 13, 12. Next time they stop, it's going to be 6 degrees. So if you know anybody with planets in even signs, the even signs are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, Pisces, or Taurus. 
you look at your chart, look at any other people's charts, anybody that has any planet around six degrees is going to be in trouble September, October, November coming up 2015. And anybody had planets around 15 degrees or ascendants around 15 degrees, we're in trouble this past March, April, and May. And also he had this, when, during the time of the accident, Sun, Mercury, and Mars were all in the 12th house, hospitalization and end of life. So these three, any planets transiting the 6th, 8th, or 12th become autom automatically become weak and are vulnerable. So these are the main points from the chart for John Forbes Nash. So it's a real tragedy to have lost him and his wife through a, an automobile accident. But very interesting case study. Shows a lot of brilliance, a lot of education. Brilliant mind. Beautiful mind was the name of the movie. Look at this. Moon and Mars together. Very logical, intuitive, compassionate mind. But once again, it would be good to know how to fix your chart, how to do the remedies for your chart. It would have been good for John Nash to be wearing a ruby for the sun, a diamond for the Venus, and a blue sapphire for the Saturn. These other planets don't so much require strengthening measures. They're pretty well placed. And if a person doesn't want to spend money on expensive gemstones, then they can wear the substitute, which is a mystical pendant known as a kavach or kavacham. You can read about that on my website, astroview.com, under planetary remedies under mystical pendant. Okay, these are the main points for the chart for John Nash. Namaste.